Hello everyone, Dr. Data Science here to teach you data science methods and tools today, tomorrow, and beyond. If you are watching this video, you probably have heard about Gradient in your machine learning class, and you want to know what Gradient is because it looks very complicated. So my goal in this video is to show you that Gradient is technically a derivative that you have learned in Calculus 1, and it's relatively easy to find. So let's go ahead and start. The first thing that we need to know is derivative. Derivative is useful to find changes in a function when we have a function like f of x equals to x squared, where x is a scalar variable. So this is something that we have seen in calculus. So we know that this function looks like this, f of x equals to x squared. Now, if you want to find the derivative of this function, we know that the derivative of x squared is two times x, which means that when x equals to zero, the derivative is zero, and then the derivative is positive for x greater than zero, and then the derivative is negative for x less than zero. We can also define another function such as x squared plus four. And now if we take the derivative of this, then we should take the derivative of each individual term. And we know that this derivative is two times x and derivative of a constant is always zero. So this derivative is going to be two times x. So now, what is a gradient? So in order to understand gradient, I start with the definition. So gradient, captures all partial derivatives of a multivariable function. So that's like the key difference. In the previous slide, we talked about the function that has only one scalar variable. But what if now we have two variables like x1 and x2 and I can define a function which now this accepts as input these two variables and let's say finds x transpose x which is the inner product between x and itself and if we compute this this would be x transpose this is x this is one by two, this is two by one. So if we do this multiplication, we get x1 squared plus x2 squared. So in some sense, this function squares all the elements of its input and then add them together. So that's exactly the function that we had in the first slide, that two dimensional ball shape that look like this because now we have x1, we have x2, and now we have a function f of x where x has two variables. So I can either write it as f of x or f of x1 and x2. So in this case, we need to find something called partial derivatives because we have two variables. And it is technically very similar to derivative because the way it works is that we assume one of these variables is changing and we fix the other ones. So let's look at this. So f of x is equals to x1 squared plus x2 squared. That's our function. And the partial derivative with respect to x1, if you want to find this, think that x2 is a constant. Do you remember in the previous slide we had x squared plus four? So think of that now x2 is equal to two 
So now we have f of x equals to x1 squared plus four. So in this case, if I ask you, what's the derivative of this function? You would say that x1 squared, its derivative is two times x1 plus derivative of four, which is zero. So it's two x1. So in this case, we fix x2. You don't have to set it equal to two. You just think of that as just as a constant value. And you assume that the other variable is changing. Similarly, when we want to find the partial derivative with respect to x2, now we assume that x1 is a constant. So in that case, we have f of x equals to x1 squared. And let's say x1 is constant and x1 equals to three. So now we get nine plus x2 squared. So therefore the partial derivative with respect to x2 would be the derivative of nine with respect to x2, which is a constant, so it's zero, plus the derivative of x2 squared, which would be two x2. So we found the partial derivative with respect to x1. We found partial derivative with respect to x2. Now, in order to find the gradient, so this is the gradient, you have to just put together all these partial derivatives. So remember that this function f accepts two input variables. So each its um, gradient will also have two elements. The first one is partial derivative with respect to x1, and then the partial derivative with respect to x2. And if you look at the previous slide, we figure out the first one is two times x1 and the other one is two times x2. And now we can take two out of this vector. And remember that this x1 and x2 is our original vector of input variables x. So this means that the gradient is simply two times x. So let's summarize this. So what we said is that if we have x, which is the set of input variables, so right now we have only two, and a function f of x, which has x1 squared plus x2 squared, then the gradient of f is two times x where x here is a two-dimensional vector. And why is this useful? Why we, do we have to use this in machine learning? That's because if x now has, let's say three elements, so you have a function with three variables, this happens a lot, for example, in linear regression, when you have multiple variables. And if we define a function f of x, which is the sum of, square elements, then the gradient is still is two times x, where x now has three elements. So this makes it really easy to extend this problem to higher dimensional cases when you have more than two or three variables. So you can have, let's say, 1,000 variables. So that's why gradient is very useful to find all these partial derivatives simultaneously. And one last example. I work out a little bit more complicated function. So now let's say we have a function f of x, where x again is x1 and x2, which is x1 plus 2x2 cubed to the power of 2. So let's say we want to first find the partial derivative of this with respect to x1. So I use a different color to see what we're doing here. So f of x is x1 plus 2x2 cubed to the power of 2. So we know that here we have to use chain rule, right? Because we have a function to the power of 2, and that function has dependence on these variables. So you can call this z. And we know that the derivative of z is squared is 2 times z. So that's the first step we have to do here, that in order to find the partial derivative with respect to x1, 
we first take the derivative here. So it would be two times Z. And remember Z is whatever inside this parentheses. And now you have to take the partial derivative of the term inside the parentheses. And here, remember, because we are taking the partial derivative with respect to x1, therefore we assume that x2 is constant. And the partial derivative of x1 with respect to x1 is one because the, because the derivative of f of x equals x with respect to x is one. So this means that we get two x1, 2x2 cubed to the power of 2 times 1. And I don't write that because anything times 1 is the same. So it doesn't change anything. So now we can do the same thing for finding partial derivative with respect to x2. I recommend you to pause the video and do this on your own and then check with my results here. But very similar to what we said before, so first we need to take the derivative of z squared, which gives us two x1 plus two x2 cube. The only difference right now is that you have to take the partial derivative of the term inside the parentheses with respect to x2, which means that now we assume that x1 is a constant. And this means that we have to just take the partial derivative of this term and using the same rules as we have before, the partial derivative of this would be two times three, which is six x two to the power of two. And then if you want to simplify this, we have a two, we have a six. So this would be 12 x two squared x one plus two x two cubed. And now if you want to find the gradient, we just put these two partial derivatives together. And we, have, we found these two. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe.